Welcome back to the Morning Show here on the Rise News. I am Adesua Omoruan. And I'm Rafa Yosini. Now, the use of dance therapy is becoming a regular routine as a healing approach that involves the use of dance and body movement to improve physical, emotional, and mental well-being. It is said more Nigerians are beginning to get involved. It's sometimes seen as a way to get rid of the stress, but more importantly, it provides job opportunity for hundreds of professional dancers within the country. We will be looking at the effectiveness and importance of dance therapy. And to do justice to this is the president of the first dance training foundation in Nigeria the Dance Duo Training Foundation and founder, as well as the director of Dance Rappi, Abimbola Obafowa. But before he joins us, uh, Rufai. Uh, can you boss a move? <laughs> can, you, can you go? Can you boss a move? Well, it depends on what the definition of guess, dance is. Oh, yeah. Dance means many things to, to many people. Mm -hmm. Dance is life, dance is character, dance mm -hmm. is strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, let, let's not forget that to a large extent, Mm -hmm. uh, we have done very well in dance. We, we owe the Guinness Book of World Record at some point with in time with Kathy mm -hmm. uh, for dance. And Nigerian dance all over the world and theater dance and all forms of uh, dance mm -hmm. has been really instrumental to telling the Nigerian narrative from the TV area to mm -hmm. other areas of the country. Mm. Let, let's, well, let's watch this, you know, effectiveness of dance therapy. We'll mm -hmm. come back, we'll talk more about it. I'm, I'm not My name is Bimbo and welcome to Dav Fitness Marathon 3.0. Well, interesting. Abimbola Obafunwa joins us now. Um, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good so, morning. Dance therapy and dance therapy. Can you tell how fit a person is from the way they dance? Oh, yes. You can. Um, well, dancing is kind of one of the most rigorous uh, routines that you can do for physical fitness. Okay. Mm. Yes. Um, because half of the time in a dance therapy session, what you see is that when you jog, for instance, or you run, you run for 10, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. and you begin to feel it, you know? And you stop, you take a break, and you start because again. I have a personal confession here. Mm -hmm. Every time I see Senator Adeleke ah. dance, <laughs> I'm in awe. Yes, yes. He's, he's, um, I, I consider him to be a very fit, fit fellow. Mm -hmm. um, of course, but the fitness, the fitness levels vary. You know, um, sometimes in a dance class, the average dance class is about one hour, one hour, 30 minutes sometimes. And uh, some people begin to pant at 20 minutes. You know, some people go all the way and people just generally let it grow on them, you know, as they come for the classes. Over two months, three months, four months, they see that they begin to develop um, greater fitness levels, you know, and can go longer, whereas they build stamina. All right, let's, let's talk about dance. It's, it's not a new thing. It's yes. been there since the, the Greek, the Roman Empire, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's constantly heralded mm -hmm. the essence of mankind. Mm -hmm. You know, everything is a dance from every part of the world, mm -hmm. from the Bedouins, from the belly dancers of the Arab world, mm -hmm. uh, to the likes of juxtaposition of dance and theater, yes. you know, the likes yes. of uh, Duroladipo. Duro and, uh, you know, some other dance troops. And, and we have seen the glory days of dance in Nigeria, you know. Uh, very prominent amongst them, if you remember, it's a Baku, you know, and his works as regards dance. What is wrong with the Nigerian dance industry? Because it looks as though dance has been relegated to another place. It used to be cultural exchange in this country. Well, um, you're very right. Dance, dance has many, many, many um, purposes. You know, um, I, I like to say dance is life, 
um, and that's what I think that's what you're trying to say. But dance is, um, is a major tool for communication, you know, and dance is popularly defined as the rhythmic movement of the body through time and space. And um, if you look at that, that definition, like I always say, there are five elements involved. There's rhythm, there's movement, there is body, and there's time and there's space. You walk through time and you occupy space, either general or personal. Um, you have a rhythm. What we experience here amongst the three of us is a rhythm. There's a balance of rhythm going on here. Um, and everybody is born to move. Uh, with the sick change is constant. And when you are changing, it means you are constantly moving forward, you know? or you should move forward. And of course, you can't ignore the fact that there is body involved. It means your physical fitness, your mental fitness, your, your psychological fitness, everything that has to do with your body has to be in check. So everybody really dances, but not everybody likes to acknowledge that they dance. You know, we all dance. Whether you hear uh, the music externally or you're playing the rhythm from your heart, you know, the beat comes from the heart. That's really where the beat comes from. You know, so every time you, are, you, you have that constant heartbeat going on, and that's where, that's where the, that's the mother of all beats, of all rhythms that you ever, ever listen to or you enjoy. Can everybody really dance? Everybody not not to sound racist here, but they say, you know, the way you Why? dance and move to music, <laughs> you can tell where you are from. Okay, so this is it. I think, I think everybody can do um, as much as they have been exposed to. You know, that's, that's, that's the bottom line. I mean, if you have a lot of kids um, uh, that are exposed to ballet, exposed to African dance, exposed to a lot of cultural dances, you know, culture is dependent on when, where you come from. So if you have a lot of them exposed to their cultural dances from when they're young, uh, it's, it's, it's um, important to, to notice that when they get older, that is what would work easier with them. So I can't tell a ballerina, for instance, who has done ballet for 15 years to come and do African dance. You know that it wouldn't look good on them. Mm. So when you see them doing African dance, to you, you say they cannot dance. But mm. if you put them in their turf, then they dust you. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's the same way, vice versa, with the African dancer. Mm. You take them abroad, and then you do. So uh, you would you probably come from the West, and you see an African dancer, and you say, oh, this is dancing funny, because okay. he's probably Judean, and then he's um, very grounded in his movements. Um, and then I would do the same for you. So I think it's just, it's the, it's the major reason why we have a lot of conflicts in the world. We for, say, for, for, don't respect for, for each other. I, I asked a question earlier, Ron, and I want you to do justice to it. You know, the commercial viability of Nigerian dance. I, I deliberately mm. mentioned the likes of Imdro Ladikbo mm. and, and the rest. Because I know dance is big business. I, I mean, take for instance, every child growing up in America uh, at some point wants to be part of the boy show theater mm -hmm. in Russia mm -hmm. and wants to dance in the Nutcracker. Yes, funny. Definitely. Ballet. Uh, but we used to have that in Nigeria. We still do. Everybody wanted to dance in. Duraladikbo's troupe, everybody wanted to dance in. About Tagunde's troupe. Mm -hmm. And it was a commercial export source. It was a source for viability, mm -hmm. you know, commercial viability. And it is big business. Mm -hmm. But we don't see that any longer. So when we are talking about the ERGP, you know, the, mm -hmm. the forward looking economic plan by the incumbent administration, yes. what's the portion of dance? Dance is big business. It is. It it's is. big export. Do you know That's how right. millions of dollars the moonwalk by Michael Jackson made for the American made, economy? Made, made for the, I mean, and it's, and it's still making. And it's and still, it's still making, making for the American economy. Yeah. And don't forget the CBN governor's five-year plan. He also yeah. has a plan for the entertainment industry. There. The entertainment industry. But, but what's his dance portion in all of that? Okay, good. So um, big, big, big kudos to the great legends that you have mentioned. Um, I think in their time, they played their part, and that's why we still remember them in history. You know, um, I, I, I would like to say that dance is still big business, and dance is becoming the um, major um, front burner for the entertainment industry, clearly. Because now you begin to see that in the last five years, you have seen more musicals come out. I know people like, um, producers like Bolan Lee Austin Peters, have um, in found a way to incorporate um, dance as a form of stage, stage full stage waka. production. Waka, I, I saw you waka hear waka, you hear saro. Mm -hmm. So saro, waka. So we, on the other hand, I mean, the Dance Hill Training Foundation is 10 years now. And what we do is that we find the talent for 10, the last 10 years, we've been finding the talent and producing and training and churning out more professional dancers. And this is what happens because 
It's really white. White Dansk is an is a great source of export for the country, and it's in it's in many many variables. For instance, one is this fitness package that we're talking about, the dance repeat that you you mentioned in the beginning. Um, dance is life. Dance is um, you dancing can help you reduce fifty percent of the amount of illnesses that go on in the society today. Is that medically proven? Yes, it is medically proven. It is medically proven that dance pr helps you develop white matter which is responsible for um, holding uh, gray matter, which is responsible for all your sensory um, uh, cells that controls the spine in the body. It is it's medically proven that dance helps you with dementia. Um, if you're in your old age and you have loss of memory, you, it is proven that dance helps you with back pain, neck pain, Dance helps build your immunity, so you begin to fight off a lot. Your body generally fights off diseases by itself. It is med and so many things are medically proven. So what we're doing now is that we're beginning to show people or talk to people about it and say, this is the power of dance. So apart from just being an, a, an area of export for tourism um, reasons, of course, that, that is very clear. I mean, the culture, Nigeria has so many cultures that even if we had to produce one every day for the next 365 days, we would not run out of a dance style to export. Mm. Literally, you would not run out of it. But, but we don't do that by, uh, commercially. And I'll give you an instance. Uh, I think it was the Zanku or the one called Bebodier. Bebodier, the Leg popular one. Now. Leg walk. Leg walk. You know that dance step, if you play the, the current uh, video game of the NBA, yes. it was used in there. Oh, I haven't seen that. As oh, wow. There's a basketball game when somebody scores. It was used in there as one of the dance steps, you know, when you score celebrate. a point, a celebratory dance step. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure credit was given to the likes of the Latans and all of brother and that Lamy brought about this dance. Probably and this it scary. brings me to the question of how can we patent dance steps? Oh, yeah, I think, um, first of all, there is, there is work going on to help. Okay, real quickly, before okay. we'll come back to you, we'll go straight to Abuja. Okay. I will go to the Supreme Court in Abuja. It's a big day as regards the decision today uh, uh, of, of the Osho State case. They are We're seeing jubilations, jubilations there on the screen. We have a, a, crew, a crew on the ground. One of our reporters is on the ground. Uh, hopefully we can connect the team uh, pretty soon to understand what exactly is playing out on the screen. We see the symbol of a broom there and this group jubilating, but we cannot tell for sure what this means. All right, uh, so this case has been on for quite some time and, and just a little historical antithesis as regards the case. Uh, let's not forget after the election was concluded in Osho State. 2018. In 2018 went to the tribunal. And when it went to the tribunal, uh, the PDP candidate did win at the tribunal, but it went ahead to the appeal court, the APC candidate won and the Supreme Court is the decider. So mm -hmm. these are the feelings from the reaction of the Supreme Court. And we're going to see how this pans out now. And we're going to see, you know, the effect of this decision of people in, in our show state. Uh, the Punch did run um, a story today saying that prayer and fasting have ended. Prayers have <laughs> ended, fasting <laughs> begins. It begins uh, as regards this decision. Captured. Everybody is waited, is waiting with bated breath mm -hmm. in Abere. Abere is the, you know, the state seat of power in our show state, the governor's house in Abere. As you guys, uh, while this is your swing, yeah. so we can see some people holding a broom there. When, when we get across the chamber, it's going to give a breakdown. But most importantly, with every Supreme Court ruling, mm -hmm. we'd like to go to the nitty gritty and look at the technicalities of the ruling. You know, mm -hmm. why did the Supreme Court sit down and give that decision? On what threshold? On what premise was it given? And we're going to look at this because, hey, when you look at historical artists, of, of, of this decision. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll look at the technicalities, and, and these are things we'll talk about in the coming days and see what, what was behind uh, the decision. We'll, we'll, we'll go to a quick break now. And we'll be right back. And, and we'll be right back. Great to have you back on the morning show here on the Rise News. We'll go back to Abuja, the Supreme Court, to be precise, where we have our correspondent Chima Wanko on ground. Chima, can you tell us uh, what this means? We're seeing jubilation on our screen. There's a lot of noise here. There's a lot of noise here. We can only imagine with all this celebration ongoing. Uh, Chima, if you can hear us, can you interpret what we're seeing on our screens right now?
while we try to connect to Chima, uh, the Supreme Court uh, is set to have uh, delivered judgments, but we need to get confirmation on that. Uh, jubilations there in front of the Supreme Court in Abuja. Hello. Hello. Are you hearing them? No? Are you hearing them? Yep. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Okay, okay, no problem. Uh, Chima, okay, you, you were talking about the, the history of the state. Uh, yeah. th this elections particularly, it's been a long one, um, keenly contested. Yeah. Remember the result after the elections, and of course what led to this was the inconclusive nature of the elections yes. with the number of uh, votes uh, cancelled more than the margin between the two leading candidates. And so they had to go to a rerun, mm. a supplementary election. Mm. Uh, and of course, uh, the APC, uh, Oyetola, emerged, yes. uh, of course, uh, and then Adeleke headed to the tribunal. And that's the just to chronicle the history of yes. what happened yes. at that election. Yes. Uh, a lot of people have questioned the constitutionality of um, inconclusive elections, right. which we've seen in recent times yeah. to be recurring. Yeah. And, and people say, you know, INEC needs to get his acts together because some put the buck, uh, the buck stops at INEC's table uh, when it comes to conducting elections mm. and all of that. But let's go to Chima. Yeah. And Tell us, we've seen celebrations uh, in front of the Supreme Court. What exactly has that happened? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, there have been lots of celebrations here, and um, the 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 um, basically here, the Supreme Court has nullified the the, the, the appeal that the Senator Debola Delike brought brought to um, the Supreme Court here. Basically, what they have done is they have upheld the ruling of the Court of Appeal, which decided that um, since Justice James Obiora was not a part of one of the days of the proceedings of the tribunal, that. The, the, the ruling of the tribunal could not be valid. That ruling that declared that Adebola Adelike was governor of um, Oshu State could not be valid. That ruling that said that he was winner of the elections could not be valid. So basically, they have upheld the ruling of the Court of Appeal, which nullified, um, uh, which, which upheld um, um, uh, Boyga Itola as the governor of the state.
All right, so, so, so what's the technicality behind uh, this is Justice James Obiora and, and the technicality in general at arriving at this decision? Because when we see a Supreme Court ruling like this, we're always looking at the books. Because obviously a Supreme Court ruling sets a precedence for other judgments uh, to follow in this country. It's law already. Well, basically, um, it's, a tele it's, it's the only technicality. Um, uh, the, the, the tribunal said there was a tribunal of about three members, and for one day, Justice James Obiora was not at, 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 the, at, at one of the sittings of, of, sittings of the tribunal. So um, that was what the Court of Appeal used um, to nullify what the, uh, the, the tribunal had, had uh, declared, what they had decided in the first place. And today, that is what the Supreme Court is upholding. They are saying that since Justice James Obiora was not there during one of the days of the proceedings of the tribunal, that um, whatever was done there was, is, is hereby nullified. And so, Justice, uh, I beg your pardon, Boyga Itola is upheld, is um, reaffirmed as the winner of the election. That's basically it. Okay, well, we, we seem not to have seen any of the candidates, uh, the governor, the incumbent governor, and um, um, Senator Adeleke anywhere in sight. Were they in court? Have you gotten reactions of the two parties? Uh, could you say that again? We am yet to see the incumbent governor, uh, Governor Yetola, or uh, Senator Adeleke around the premises. Uh, I was just asking if they were present in court when that judgment was given, and if we were able to get the reactions of any of the parties. Well, basically, that's that what we're going to do now. As soon as we're through with this, with this live cross, we're going to be moving to see whether we can get uh, the councils, um, the councils for the petitioner, the councils for um, the respondents, and then we'll see whether we can get some supporters of the of this. So um, uh, that's what we're going to do right now. But right now, um, there's a huge. Uh, you've, you've seen the, the the video. There's a huge crowd behind us. There's been lots of celebration and lots of um, lots, lots of celebrations behind us. But as soon as we're through with this, we'll go on to get um, the councils in the case. Thank you, Chima. We'll leave you to go get those reactions. Thank you so much. Chima Wanko, our correspondent there at the Supreme Court in Abuja. So you have it, the breaking news. Yeah, in case you're just joining us, the breaking news once again, uh, the Supreme Court in Abuja has dismissed the case of uh, Senator Adeleke. Once again, the breaking news is the Supreme Court in Abuja has dismissed the case of Senator Adeleke. That means that uh, Oye Tola mm -hmm. remains the governor of Osho State. Uh, Southwest Nigeria. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, so, so that, that that's that, that's the ruling there by the Supreme Court. In further bulletins, you get to know more. I will uh. talk to other people. All right. So quickly back, I was talking about commercialization of dance. Okay, great. So how do we do it? How do we? Is there even an empirical form and say, okay, how we can set financial targets? How many dance shows happen in Nigeria that are ticketed? Because I don't hear too, too much of the shows. How many okay. dance shows happen in this country that partner with corporate organizations? and are widely ticketed, and people pay for them. How many dance companies pay taxes well over a million naira every month? OK, well, um, a couple of answers to this question, because it's, it's, just, it's not just a straight line. Um, more of the dance companies right now, I am aware that they are being more sensitized, and they are more strict with their intellectual property um, rules. You know, and that, that, that's something that has happened over time because we realize that a lot of these dances, like you pointed out, go out. And you know, because dance is almost seen as something that is free for all. You know, they put out a dance and before you know it, it goes so viral. You know, with music, you probably need to um, know the lyrics and you, you learn, there's a bit of learning, but with dance, because it's one step, like Bay Body, and you feel you can Bay Body, she feels she can Bay Body. Actually, I can't. Every, <laughs> no, well, <laughs> most people always feel. Yes. Like sha sh shoki or shaku shaku, mm -hmm. you know, once you can do this and you do this, mm -hmm. you feel you're doing the step already. So at the point where you do this and you do this, you feel like you don't need to pay, the, the, you don't need mm -hmm. to sign rights or pay. So you see that birthday parties, mm -hmm. you see here and there. So it's the responsibility of the dance companies or whoever is forming or creating a dance routine. And that's, that's just one angle to ensure that they patent whatever it is. And that has been done before. You know, and um, then... In what, in what regard? Which, which has been pitched in this country? Which oh, I mean, there, there's... There, okay, so one way to um, look at it is if you see a dance style like um, a galala, mm -hmm. the way you know that it's, it's... You know, you cannot miss the fact that it's a shoki step. You know, and it, you, whenever you see galala, you know that this is from Daddy Shoki. Whenever you see a skelewu, you know that it's from this particular artist that this came out. You know, so to a large extent, some people have been able to stamp their names on some, on, on some routines. Now, the other, in other cases, 
Some people have not been able to because they probably didn't have the backing well, there was a or the platform. Between, there was a controversy between Nigeria and Ghana. Who owns Azonto? Who owns it? Yeah, so, for gonna, instance, you know, when you, when you so, want to patent a song, it has to be originally yours. Yeah, do so we really we have, have who, original who, dance steps? Who, who, who we do. Zonto, we have instance. original dance steps, and I think, and I, that's why I said there's a, it's a, it's work in pro in progress mm -hmm. because you find out that now dancers are beginning to realize that oh I can actually own the step and put my name on it and go to the copy the, the 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 authorities or the lawmakers and say you know what I'm going to patent this and this is what um, I created so if you're going to do this anywhere you probably need my permission for it now talking about shows um, quite a number of dance shows have been ticketed I mean there's so many so many as for instance you have a Jodi you have Kudos, you had Kafi who had something a couple of weeks ago, you know, and a couple of, uh, we have the Lagos Dance Exhibition that we have also done, mm -hmm. and most of the time, when these shows come out, they are actually ticketed. Now, did you hear about them? Maybe the question is you didn't know about the show because you did not hear about it, you know, um, but it doesn't mean that these tickets, where these shows were not ticketed. You know, I know dance has been used a lot to push a lot of musical shows. You know, so that's probably what you're hearing because when you, as you see a music show, you cannot see a music show without dance uh, dancing. We have you know. to go uh, almost immediately, but let me just ask you: What's the greatest misconception when it comes to the dance industry in Nigeria? Very quickly. Okay, I think the greatest misconception is that dancers are not serious-minded uh -huh. people, and and that's because um, they're very expressive. They're they're creative minds. They're very expressive, and you think that um, it doesn't, it's, it's business as usual when it comes to dancing. But what people don't see is that they don't see how much work it goes into creating one dance routine. Mm -hmm. In one routine, for instance, you can have almost 160 dance steps. Mm -hmm. And that's why dancers are kind of highly intelligent people, because of the cognitive patterns, mm -hmm. because of how okay. well they have to keep remind, remembering these things every uh -huh. time they have to redo it. Thank you. Uh, we have to go on break now. I've been Bola Obafunwa. We'll be right back. It's great to have you back here on the Arise uh, Morning Show. Uh, let's take you to Abuja now, to the Supreme Court, where we have our correspondent, Chima Wanko, on ground. Yomi Ali, USAN. Yeah. Sir, and, and you appear for who, sir? I appear for EPC. Right, sir. So, basically, what, what was the judgment, and what was it based on? The judgment is based on justice. If you know, if you look at it, there were three judges at the lower court, at the tribunal. And one of these judges gave judgment in favor of Governor Yetola. At, this, at the Court of Appeal, there were five judges, I mean justices. Four gave judgment in favor of Justice, I mean, of Yetola. At the Supreme Court now, five gave judgment. Five plus four plus one will give you ten. So that's majority, I mean, democratic judgment. It shows that justice is on the side of Governor Boiga Oyetola. No, sir, I want to ask, did the, the Honorable Justice of the Supreme Court not consider the, the ruling of the tribunal in the first place that um, the supplementary election should never have held in the first place? No, uh, well, I cannot, I cannot, I'm not here to sit as an appellate person over the judgment of the Supreme Court. They have said, those in the minority, they've said it the way they saw it. But the Supreme Court today, the prevailing judgment today at the Supreme Court is the judgment of those in the majority, which said, the five of them said, the election was in order, free, fair, and ANEC performed wonderfully. That is the judgment of the Supreme Court. So um, at this point in time, um, you, you tell us, you're on the team, you tell us what happens next. Nothing, a celebration. Celebration happens next. The governor will now be able to take, exactly. the governor will now start uh, the work of I mean, governor of Oshun State. So it's a celebration for the people of Oshun because you cannot, you can, there's no way that you can subvert the wish of the people. And the wish of the people today is what the Supreme Court has said. Thank you, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, um, Chima Wanko, our correspondent, just interviewed the council to the APC, yeah. uh, Governor Oetola, and he had just explained how they arrived at that judgment. Mm. Um, says it's judgment for justice, and now the gov governor can concentrate on the business of governing uh, ocean people. 
I mean, this 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 brings to an end the cakes. Uh, mm -hmm. It's been on for quite some time. A lot of people have waited with bated breath, but but this brings to an end. Uh, most importantly, what is incumbent on the governor to do is to be able to be magnanimous in victory. Indeed. You know, bring every party together. Mm -hmm. Extend uh, the olive branch. The, the most important perhaps. thing is the people of Osho need are the greatest winners in this, mm -hmm. uh, because as regards development of that state, that state is in dire need of development. Still a very high unemployment rate. You know, across possibly very civil service state. The state needs a lot of capital injection. We've got infrastructure. Uh, but the problem is uh, the people are still suffering. Mm. Uh, the people need a, a push forward in their lives, in their financial lives. They need more industries. And these are the things the governor should do to Indeed. attract investors. Uh, because it's a very dire strait for the state. Uh, the state has got one of the lowest um, IGR. uh, IGRs. You know, and, and apart from that, even the money the state gets from the government coffers is quite very low. Mm -hmm. But it's got so many, many potential. It's got potential for tourism. You know, it's so got we need to begin to look inward. Oh yeah, it's it's uh, you, you've, you've got great tourist potentials like the Ulumiri waterfalls mm -hmm. in Eri Jesha is quite there. Mm -hmm. You know, many famous Nigerians come from that state, and and it's got a lot of possibilities for tourism. So so, uh, it most importantly, the people of Osho should benefit from this. Indeed, and congratulations to the governor. Yeah, and that, that that chapter is closed. Um, let's go back to dance, uh, dan okay. dance and therapy. Um, before that, you were talking about. Uh, we, we've talked about patent in Nigerian dance steps, yes. if we do have yes. dance steps. Um, and Rufai raised uh, a cogent question there. Mm. Rufai, was that your question? Yes. So I was talking about you know, patenting dance steps, making money from it. So you, you got talking to me about the Guild of Dancers. Okay. Uh, and, and what was the, the last constitutional review you had? Okay. So um, the constitution um, in the last couple of months has just been revised. And of course, revised by um, top. Um, executives in the dance industry, basically, um, from the head of Spirit of David to the head of Society. Of of David. Yes, I am uh, still. Uh, I, I remember you. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I remember doing some things with, with Spirit of David when you guys had celebrity takes too. Oh, great. I, I won the first edition I of celebrity takes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With Funola Ophiebe. Funola Ophiebe, yes. I remember you. Um, and then, um, so you have Sarah Bulos, and you have Isioma Williams, who was a former um, president or chairman of the Lagos chapter of the Guild of Nigerian Dancers, and a couple of other, okay, Mr. Shoaibu and co. Now, what well, the idea for revising the constitution is because we know or have noticed that there are lo lots of loopholes here and there. And I think pretty much, it's not, I'm not the, in the best position to say conclusively, mm -hmm. this is the position where we are right now. But I know for sure that there is more awareness going out to dancers um, around the country saying that you have a right to patent your styles, you know, and that's the message. You have a right to patent. It's your own creative output. Mm. You know, um, we've had some dancers, uh, choreographers who have, um, who have sealed, literally sealed the rights to their productions. Mm. You know, I know the Olorio Ko guy, mm. you know him, Dayo yeah. you know, um, there was a, usually when, when they tour, they go round with particular productions. You cannot just take the production and go and run with it. You need the right of the choreographer or the director. You know, I know Kudus Onikeku shuttles between France and Nigeria here. You can't just take his own production and move. I know Spirit of David has done the same across the globe, the continent. Let, let's talk yeah. about Spirit of David. You know, Celebrity Takes was about the first dance, you know, program on television and national TV yes. in this country. I remember you know, doing a lot with a team out of Planet One. Mm -hmm. And that's why, I mean, when I first saw you, I mean, yes. obviously I said, you, you, you can't remember me from Maryland. I do uh, remember and, <laughs> and, and I said to myself, what happened to Celebrity Takes? Because we thought it was going to, just going to be an increased momentum from Celebrity Takes to It was mm. endless. I think, mm. I, I think uh, Zane was on board, you know. Yes, we, Skybank. Skybank and things like that. Mm -hmm. But what happened? Oh, and what? even at that, we've had other big brands like the Family Dancer Town with Maltina, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it, it looks as though oh, well, it's I a way. It's, it's like me saying um, what happened to Project Fame or what happened to Idols or what happened to, you know? I think this, I think this productions come and go. They have their times and their seasons. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm not a producer or an, or an executive producer of the productions that you have just mentioned. You know, but have, working on those productions, um, I realized, so for instance, yes, you're talking Celebrity Takes Two. 
and he ran for two seasons in 2007 and he ran in 2009. And while he did run, I think it really met its target and its, its goal. You know, um, however, it hasn't come back since then. But since then, you've seen shows like um, uh, Multi Guinness Street Dance. You've seen shows that Maltina Dancer that I was a part of. And Maltina Dancer ran for nine straight years. You know, and after running a, a production like that for nine years, you, you, you asking why did it stop? It's almost like saying you didn't realize that you ran for so long. Mm. You know, the economy comes in, you, you, the brands are, that are involved or the stakeholders involved would probably say, okay, we need to redirect our focus at some point, mm. you know, um, and we'll while they about, ran, they were successful productions. We'll talk about how to become more successful and how we can get the private sector come more on mm. board when it comes to dance in Nigeria. But let's quickly go to Abuja again, the Supreme Court, where we have Chima Wanko. Chima, what's the update you have for us at this time? Well, basically, everything has happened here. Um, it's a lot quieter in the premises of the Supreme Court right now. Um, um, Justice Body Rhodes, has, he, he read the lead judgment, and he said that basically that um, he, he, he dismissed the appeal of Senator Adebola Adeleke and uh, upheld the ruling of the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal had ruled that um, because Justice Obiora of the Court of Appeal was not present on one of the days when the tribunal sat, that he could not read um, the, the, the judgment that said that, that declared Senator Adebola Adeleke as winner of the Oshu State election. So the Supreme Court held that position, upheld that position, and he said that basically um, that, that is what should have been done, that is how it should have been. So generally, um, the, the winners, well, they've celebrated and everything. You've seen the videos and all of that, you know. And uh, the losers have quietly, you know, um, left the left the premises of, of the Supreme Court. So that is how it is right now. Um, basically, the the Court of Appeals um, ruling has been upheld here, and Boyka um, Oyetola um, has been reaffirmed by the Supreme Court as winner of that election. Well, thank you very much, Shima Wanka, for your reporting. Fantastic. Thank you so much. And there you have it. Uh, very quickly, let's wrap up. You have a dance performance and production outfit. Uh, yeah. What is the message to, and you said this is capable of employing thousands of Nigerians. Thousands. What is the message to young, emerging Nigerian dancers? And how can we make this more profitable? Get those private sector, um, mm. Rufai was trying to uh, hint on. How do we get them on board and make it sustainable? Very quickly. Um, OK, so how do you get them on board? It's probably by still just keep doing what you are doing you know, and um, invite more of them to see. You know, half of the time they don't get on board because they don't see, mm. they don't know. You know, so it's, it, it's imperative for whoever the production um, team is or whoever the marketers are or whoever the producers are, it's imperative for them to um, explore their um, public relations skills more. Mm. You know, and that's the message again that we are sending to the dance production houses because it's not just one production house, there's so many, and da everybody dances around the country, you know. Um, then secondly, would be to ensure that your productions are probably uh, productions that have a connection with the people. And half of the time, those corporate bodies would not come on, on board with you if they don't feel there is a connection. And then thirdly, there has to be a balance of interests. Mm. You know, half of the time we make a mistake of being highly creative people and we run in our own creative direction, not realizing that whoever it is you're partnering with, partnering with on the other side is also having some goals and targets for it, most likely the year. You know, and if you're saying come on board, what you're saying is that I bring a bit of me and you bring a bit of you and let's see if both of us can achieve our goals together. Mm -hmm. So you come with your money, I come with my creativity and you get a bit more exposure, I get a bit more satisfaction from what I do and probably make a couple of um, bucks here and there. So you know, there's so many things that can be done, mm -hmm. but I think it first of all starts with making, making them welcome, bring, pull them in and then given the best that you possibly can ever state. And make sure you connect. People, people will go back to what, they, um, what is strong in their memory. Mm. You know, uh, we, enough of doing abstract things in the mm. name of creativity. You have to connect. Dance is dance to dance. The reason why you probably can relate to some dance styles is because when you were growing up, you knew and there was something between you and that style. Mm. And you have history. Mm -hmm. And because you remember history, your son is probably trying to show you something new. But then you're still telling him that, oh, no, that's nothing compared to. Even though you probably can see that the steps are a lot harder, a lot more complex. The boy is really doing great. But you're still saying, no, nothing compared to what in I did day. in my days. You know, it's because you feel connected to something. And you're not really.
you so much. We'll like to say everything to you. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you.